Hey everyone, Greg Kelly here, writer and director at Creative Clones. A few videos back I talked about getting into Super 8 filmmaking, and a couple of people asked me about the camera I bought. So here's a video about the Canon Autofocus 518 Super 8 camera. The Canon 518 was released back in the 1960s as a home movie camera. This makes them really easy to use. It's pretty much just a point and shoot camera, with a few little features, which I'll go through soon. I bought my Canon 518 at a market. I had seen it previously and noted the make and model, to which I did some research. I found out that it ran on four AA batteries, three in the top which powers the motor and one in the grip which powers the zoom. So when I went to look at the camera a second time, I took the four AA batteries in my pocket so I could test the features. There's also a battery in the side of the camera which powers the light meter. That battery was hard to find, but I found an online hack for it, which I'll show you later in the video. As I said before, these cameras are fairly basic to use, but I'll run through the features top down. First up is the push button zoom function. You'll need one AA battery to operate this. This gives you a nice slow zoom in and out. The lock and release dial. This safety feature locks the camera functions, so you'll need to set it to R to release the lock and operate the camera. This little latch will open the film chamber. Funnily enough, this is where you'll load your film cartridge. This is also where you can see the motor running. Very handy for when you're buying the camera and testing the motor. Inside the film chamber, you'll see the film gate. The film from the cartridge will run along this gate and be exposed to the light from the camera lens. Over the years, dust and fibers collect here. So this is where you'll usually see the scratches and dust on the film footage. The frame rate switch. This allows you to set your frame rate at either 18 frames per second or slow-mo. These are the only two options for frame rate on this camera. The camera trigger. This is probably the best thing about shooting with Super 8. All your filming is done via a trigger. Underneath you have a screw cap that once removed with a coin reveals one AA battery. This powers the zoom function. Beside it is a spot for a tripod screw. This is if you wish to mount your camera on a tripod. Hidden on the back of the hand grip is a switch for adjusting from daylight to indoors. It's pretty straightforward. Switch to daylight when shooting outside and switch to indoor lighting when shooting inside. Behind the camera is the viewfinder. Obviously you'll see your filming target in the viewfinder, but you'll also see a light meter gauge along the top. Always make sure that's working before you film as this will control your light exposure. It can be the difference between having overexposed or underexposed film. The best way to test it is to shoot towards a dark area. You'll see the needle move and our aperture is now wide open. Then point towards a light area and the needle moves back and our aperture closes. Beside the viewfinder is a screw cap that removes the top section of the camera. This is where three AA batteries live. These power the motor. Flipping the camera over, you have the film gauge window. This gauge lets you know how much film you have left while filming. Keep an eye on this if you have limited film. But roughly each 50 foot cartridge has about three minutes of shooting time while shooting at 18 frames per second. I'm not exactly sure how much you'll get in slow-mo, but it'll be a lot less. This is the sneaky light meter battery hiding place. As I mentioned before, this type of battery can be hard to find but I'll show you a hack to overcome this soon. Manual and auto exposure switch. I've never used the manual function as I'm happy to let the auto exposure do its thing. So I keep a piece of tape over the switch, otherwise it's too easy to bump it and switch to manual without knowing. This little window is the battery gauge. Just beneath it, underneath the camera, you'll see two little buttons, one white and one red. The white tells you if your light meter battery is working and the red tells you if your AA batteries are working. It's a pretty nifty feature. This is the other zoom function, apart from the button function on the opposite side of the camera. I never really use this as I prefer to use the button zoom as it's a lot smoother. 
but this would be handy for a fast paced zoom or a crash zoom. And this is your focus function. Turn the focus ring and focus your image as you look through the viewfinder. And that's pretty much all the features. Now for that light meter battery hack. The original battery for the light meter was a mercury button cell. This type of battery was discontinued, but you can get a replacement in zinc air battery. But I've been using two Energizer A76 button cell batteries, some rolled up cardboard, a piece of folded up foil, and a paper clip. I placed the two button cell batteries in the rolled up cardboard so they're snug and secure. Next I put the folded up foil on top, and then I finish it off with a paper clip. Latch it on and replace the cover. This seems to work pretty well for me. I've had it play up a couple of times, but I've just opened it up, given the batteries a wiggle, and it's happy again. The only other issue I had were the batteries in the top section not working. At one point I thought my camera was dead, but I gave the top section a good blowout, gave the batteries a good pushing around, and she was good to go again. I'm thinking it was the terminal or a connector. Being an old camera, some of the connectors are probably worn or have spots of corrosion. Once you have your batteries charged and working and you're familiar with all the features, or even if you're not, it's time to get shooting once you've loaded your film. There's no need to be in darkness to load the film cartridge. You can pretty much load it anywhere, which makes it super handy if you need to change film on the run. Once the cartridge is loaded and the gauge is reading 50, you're ready to shoot. Remember to set your camera to R on the release dial, so you can unlock and use the camera. One final check though, check to see if the needle is moving along the light meter gauge. If it's not, check your battery gauge. If it doesn't move, then the battery is either flat or not connected properly. Give the batteries a wiggle or replace them. Check that your subject is in focus. The best way to do this is to zoom in, focus on your subject and then zoom back out. Pull the trigger and you've filmed your first piece of film. Once you've hit zero on your film gauge, that's it, no more film. It's time to unload it and send it off to a place to get it developed and scanned. This is the process of developing the film and then digitizing it to a digital file so you can edit it with your editing software. If you live in or near a major city, chances are there's a photography or video place that will provide the service. Otherwise, you may have to search online and post it away. Here in Melbourne, I get my film processed at Nanolab and I'll link them in the description below. The Canon 518 is a pretty popular Super 8 camera, so I can recommend getting one if you're looking at getting into Super 8 filmmaking. I haven't used any other Super 8 cameras, so I can't really make any comparisons, but as far as functionality and features go, it does everything I need to, plus it looks pretty damn aesthetically pleasing. And as far as Super 8 filmmaking goes, it's a pretty fun hobby. I had no idea what I was doing when I bought my first camera, but it was fun to learn the features and functions along the way, and hopefully you get as much joy out of it as well. If you have any comments or questions, please leave them below. Till next time.